Welcome to our review on reaction time and thinking distance. First thing we're going to consider then is what we mean by the phrase reaction time. And quite simply, it's the time taken from seeing something to the reaction you're actually having to that. So this could be putting on the brake or pressing a stopwatch button. And what we find is that human reaction time is about 0.2 seconds. Obviously, it varies from individual to individual, but that's a good number to remember that human reaction time is about 0.2 seconds. If we wanted to measure reaction time, then we can do the ruler drop test. So I've given you the diagram to give you the basics of it, but you have your hand just resting off the edge of a desk with a ruler just above it, and then you drop it. And when you catch it, the distance it travels, you can then look up on a chart to see what the reaction time actually is. The next term we need to know a definition for is thinking distance. So when we're talking about the thinking distance, it's the distance travelled in the time it takes from seeing a potential problem to starting to apply the brakes. So in the picture I've given you there, obviously that car is going to see the fact that there's a deer in the road and they will have that time where they're thinking about the fact they need to put their foot on the brake to not have a new hood ornament. So the time it takes for them to see the problem and start applying brakes, they're still traveling at that point. So their thinking distance is the distance traveled in the time it takes from seeing the problem to applying the brakes. Make sure you include that phrase distance traveled rather than just saying the time it takes from seeing the problem to applying the brakes because it is a thinking distance. The kind of question they could give you is this one here. Estimate the thinking distance for a car traveling at 50 miles an hour. And they may or may not tell you that in one mile there were 1,609 meters because that was one of the conversions we looked at all the way back in our early physics topics. What we need to do first of all is highlight, underline, circle or jot down the key bits of information from our question. Once we've done that, we've got to convert 50 miles an hour into meters per second, which are the standard units for speed. So to do that, we need to times 50 by 1609 to get the miles into meters. And then because it's in hours, we need to divide that by 60 times 60 to give us the seconds, which gives us 22.3 meters per second. Then what we need to do is to estimate our thinking distance so we know that distance is speed times time and the actual distance that we're going to travel will be affected by the reaction time, which, as we said, in an average human is 0.2 seconds. So we do our speed 22.3 times by our reaction time 0.2 seconds to give us 4.5 meters to two significant figures. The next thing we need to consider is what factors would affect the thinking distance. And the typical question they like to ask you here is to state some factors which will increase the thinking distance. Now, what you've got to do is be careful on what you're going to say here, because quite often in the actual question, they've said something about an increased speed. So if it's asking you for other factors, don't write speed down if they've given it to you in the question already. If they haven't, then by all means, increased speed is a good one. Other than that, thinking distance is anything that's going to affect your reactions as an individual. So drinking alcohol and using drugs, don't put those as two different answers. They'll be classed as the same marking point. Being tired, distractions, eating or drinking, that falls under the distractions bit as well. Using a sat nav radio or mobile phone. So if I were you, I'd remember three of those. So drinking alcohol or using drugs, being tired, and increase speed and then you will always have two you can include in an answer. The last thing they could ask you to do is to use the ruler drop reaction time result to actually calculate the reaction time. So an example question here would be a student carries out the ruler drop reaction timer and gets a distance of 25 centimeters. Use the equation final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared equals two times acceleration times distance to calculate the final velocity and estimate the reaction time. So the first thing we need to do is to calculate the final velocity. So we rearrange the equation and substitute in to give us the square root of two times 10 times 0.25 because we've converted the centimeters into meters 
put that into your calculator and you get 2.23 meters per second. That gives us our speed and then what we need to do is using the distance and our speed we can then work out the time. So time is distance divided by speed so 0.25 divided by 2.23 gives us 0.11 seconds. Hopefully at the end of this video you can explain methods of measuring human reaction times, you can recall typical human reaction times, recall what's meant by the term thinking distance, explain factors that affect the thinking distance, and obviously carry out calculations associated with this.